take to get that ready? I mean, hopefully we can have it ready by the fall, if, if possible. What would it take to get it open? What do we need to get it open? And again, that was a discussion we had about possibly cleaning the seats, doing some things like that. Uh, again, do you want to explain well, only on that? Right now, I'm, I'm waiting to hear from the fire marshal. Right. And he promised me, and I'm sure we'll get it this, this week. Once we have that, yes, I mean, there are union agreements, there are right. all kinds of issues. Uh, why can't we overcome them? So it's going to take some conversation, but yeah, those yeah. kind of things are in a discussion stage. No, I know you did a very thorough job of going through the building and spent a lot of time with it. Obviously, if we can get the building so that we could use it, depending on what the fire marshal says and what our building inspector says, those parts that can be used, obviously, if we can come up with the uses that would be agreeable to everybody, the sooner we do that, the better we be agreed, right? In fact, I'm told the building is still in active, on the active roles for the city, so it was never decommissioned, right. which means it's technically could be used today. Mm -hmm. We had a reason to use it in the re in the realm of education, entertainment, that kind of thing. So I think the theater is mostly a cleanup activity, but we would have to check the lighting and the sound systems, making sure that they're functioning. Again, I, I, that's terrific news because the sooner that could happen, the more uh, support you're going to get from the citizenry, yeah. and you're now going to see an active building, and now we're going to create that destination that everybody's talking about. So we're going to get some momentum building rather than say, well, okay, we're going to wait till the end and then decide what to do. If we can get that particular area functioning, that would be terrific to have something in there and uh, have some events planned. Okay. So whatever it takes, and Frank, when we get that report, obviously, from the, those uh, you know, people that need to report. That would be terrific because now I think there's a lot of people in the community that would be willing to spend a, a day or a night or whatever doing activities. I just drove, I drove by over by Miss Porter School on Saturday going on my way to, to Avon, the Senator. And there was about 15 people in a house there that were working on a house in that street behind uh, or going through Miss Porter School. So I know that there are a lot of people that would be more than willing to uh, come down and start the project. I think from a liability standpoint, right. the city is willing to to involve that. They just didn't want people carrying things up right. and down stairs. So from a, a cleaning perspective, we have been clear. There's and we're keeping oh, yeah. track of the volunteers. Okay. Light cleaning, nothing involving lifting or stairs or anything like that. Um, from a volunteer standpoint, the city already coordinates with scout troops, so there's precedent. So we're good there. Um, I think it's just a matter of timing, and I think the preliminary timeline that. Um, Commissioner Albert put out and coordinated for our last meeting, the veterans piece works out really nicely because it's November. So there's time for us to make sure that all of these components of having that piece, that piece of that building at the very least operational so that we can again have people coming in and, and having it be used for a purpose. So that's what's so attractive about really using the veterans ceremonies as a end mark for that. Um, the boulevard was used last weekend by the Mump Festival on the outside, the exterior piece. How did that go? Did you have a little weather thing going? A little weather thing. Yeah. But did you have pe people came? Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Okay. Yeah. Well, Good. Okay. And I did speak to the veterans. I know uh, Ellen said we're going to, Wednesday is the next Veterans Council <coughs> meeting. I'm going as well. Um, they are amenable to uh, building an entire set of events around Veterans Day this year as a you know semi-formal relaunch of the more of veterans memorial boulevard center um, they're thrilled absolutely thrilled about it and i did also speak with the um, musical artistic community about launching a christmas or a holiday event cycle as well and they would also be amenable to having a symphony play there the choral society the brass and wind ensemble the high school bands, everybody wants to get together and relaunch this building. As Dave said, there's a lot of community upswell to um, making this happen, and it will pay a great public relations dividends when we do that. The last thing, by the way, that I also checked on since our last meeting was um, the board, the um, chamber does have an arm that's 501c3 that if we do go forward with any kind of contributions towards the building, um, we can uh, work it through one of those arms. So it's kind of a 
kind of a nice thing also. So it's all good news. Yeah. And the last item I had is, is the same. I was charged with checking in with the Main Street Community Foundation and there are two opportunities where we could do something there as well if we didn't have another option for 501c3. There is a slight fee schedule for them to manage that piece for us, but um, so we do have options and I think that we should probably schedule that for a more uh, specific conversation about both the crowdsourcing piece of that for public input. There was actually somebody on the MBS Facebook page after our last meeting saying, how do I contribute? Well, we have to have an answer for people like that. And this particular gentleman didn't live anywhere near here, but wanted to do something to help support that effort. So the crowdsourcing F um, 501c3 uh, charitable donations piece needs to move up on the agenda as well. Do you mean, I'm sorry, do you mean like a Kickstarter kind of thing? That, that kind of those are the things we talked about, but we want it to be able to have a tax benefit for those people who are donating, so we need to be attached to a 501c3 so that you can actually use it for, and we're looking for, for big donations as well as the, the crowdsourcing piece as well. That was the homework assignment from last month, find the 501c3 who wants to be our partner. Okay, so it is now almost 10 after 8. If we can go through the task force members one more time, then I'd like to go to the subcommittee part. Cheryl. On the donations, are we looking at some kind of uh, recognition type um, plaques or, or, or namings or things depending on the level? And should we put together some kind of hierarchy for that? And will the city allow us to do that in a public building to that extent? I think those are all great questions and I would say that I think anybody who contributes needs to have some place of recognition from a dollar to ten thousand dollars or whomever. Um, but we do have to go through some of those processes. For example, and there's some restrictions on signage and advertising on park property. So if one were to say that the park department just ended up being the management piece for that, well then we would have some policy issues. Then there's just the whole what's that end use and how much commercialism do we want, that type of thing. So all of those are, are things that we'd have to look at. But in terms of people who provide seed money, donations and grants, I think that recognition is, is critical. Is there anything in the deed from um, the original deed that allocated the property for this that might restrict those kind of things? Mm, I haven't read the deed since we started the task force. I don't believe so. I think most of that flowed from ordinances and policies that were enacted by the okay. park board okay. after when the park board was formed in 1913. I'd be willing to help you with that. Okay. Together. I could get you a copy of that. Anybody on this end have any other things? Okay. So, oops, of course. Do you have any other um, I think it would probably be better um, when we do our tasks for the next meeting, assignments and priorities for June 19th. Okay, so at this point, we do have the luxury of having some meeting space. So the theater subgroup can go into the meeting room, which is the larger conference room outside of these doors. I think that that will be a better um, workspace for you in order to get those questions. I'm going to go there as well so that we can take minutes from that piece. Um, does the facility subgroup want to meet? You do not want to meet. Okay. I think we've covered end use. Is there anything? We okay. can stay for a few more minutes and talk about end uses of those, okay. those who wish to. So, and the Historic Resources subgroup does not have to meet tonight. So, having heard that from the other subgroups, then I'm going to change the course of that. We need to do um, a quick wrap-up of tasks for next, for next, and then I think what we'll do is we'll recess, and as long as there's somebody here who can help me adjourn the meeting, anybody else who's not interested in the theater group, we will finish our meeting and then we will concentrate on theater. So I know that Bill had something that he wanted to bring up as a motion for the next meeting. So now would be the time to do that. I would like to uh, move that uh, we authorize people that are not aware that this committee was originally